You're watching Study with Sudhir. This is your digital classroom. My name is T.S. Sudhir. We are looking at a chapter in the Kingdom of Fools, a delightful story from the Moments, which is the supplementary reader for students of class 9 CBSE, right? And uh, this one is written by A.K. Ramanujam, one of the most popular and prolific writers India has produced. Now, this is basically the story of a king and a minister and also a guru and his disciple right uh, it's a very nice story it reads almost like bedtime reading so there isn't much of layering but there are a few themes that you need to be mindful of now basically why is the title called the kingdom of fools and that's what you will realize as you read the story that you need someone with a lot of wisdom and intelligence to be actually ruling over a kingdom and in this particular case the king and his advisor, his minister, both were absolute fools, which is why the title in the kingdom of fools. In the kingdom of fools is also the name given to this kingdom by a guru, right? Uh, and that's what the story is all about. Now, basically, what Ramanujam starts off by saying is that in the kingdom of fools, both the king and the minister were idiots. So, he's pretty forthright, pretty blunt, pretty sharp about his condemnation and what he actually think of both things of both the king and the minister they did not want to run things like other kings so they decided to change night into day and day into night right they ordered that everyone should be awake at night till their fields as in do their farming agriculture on the fields during the night when it was all dark and run their businesses only after dark and go to bed as soon as the sun came up. Anyone who disobeyed would be punished with death. The people did as they were told for fear of death. Now you see this is going up completely against the laws of nature. Forget human beings. Even the plants need the sunlight for photosynthesis, right? So even these plants, the trees, the vegetation is used to actually operating and working during daytime, right? Here, they are the king and the minister have issued this diktat that no, during the day you need to rest and at night is when you need to work. So only a fool would actually try to challenge nature like that and actually change the way even nature operates. Uh, that is making night because night is meant to be for rest but you are making night time into work time and daytime into rest time. Now, metaphorically also speaking, going against light, you know, you are saying that you need to work when it is absolutely pitch dark, right? And not work when it is actually light. So you are in that sense, you are refusing light. So a person who refuses light can never actually get enlightened, right? I'm just playing on the words light and enlightened, right? Uh, now, the king and the minister were delighted because the people out of fear were actually falling in line as in they were doing what they were ordered to do because obviously who would want to risk taking on a king and the minister right now one day what happened is that a guru as in a very saintly kind of figure and his disciple as in his a guru or chela they arrived in the city now it, it is a beautiful city no doubt and uh, it was broad daylight but they found that everyone around there was actually asleep including there was not a mouse there was even the cattle had actually learned to sleep during the day and work during the daytime uh, the two were hungry they actually found that they could and when it was night time they could actually uh, buy anything from the bazaar now uh, they were quite surprised that every item in that bazaar cost the same. That is one duddu, that is one rupee. They could buy all the food they wanted for one rupee. Now, when they had cooked and eaten, the guru realized that this was a kingdom of fools. Uh, and it would not be a good idea to stay with them. Now, you know, see the contrast between the disciple and the guru. The disciple feels it's a good idea to be in this kingdom of fools because you can get everything very cheap, right? But the 
Guru realizes that it's not good to be in the company of fools because you are actually known by the company you keep and if your company is that of fools, even though you can argue the people were not fools, they were only doing so for fear of um, earning the wrath of incurring the wrath of the king and the minister, right? But it was a kingdom which was ruled by two idiots. So the Guru did not want to actually have anything to do with that place. So he decided to go whereas the disciple decided to stay on and he grew fat over a period of time because he was able to get a lot of food to eat for very very little price. Now what happened was that a thief broke into a rich merchant's house one bright day. Mind you bright day because even the thieves were now working during the daytime. So he broke into the house by breaking making a hole in the wall and he sneaked in and as he was carrying out his loot the wall collapsed on him and he died right now the thief's brother approached the king he approached the king and he said and listen to this dialogue and it's an important piece of dialogue he says your highness when my brother was pursuing his ancient trade ancient trade a reference to the fact that generation after generation of that thief's family was actually indulging in theft as a profession itself. So it's almost very witty and sarcastic in that sense, right? A wall fell on him and killed him. This merchant is to blame at whose house he was actually committing the burglary. He should have built a good strong wall. You must punish the wrongdoer and compensate the family for this injustice. So look at the uh, timidity look at what the thief's brother actually has the cheek to ask uh, the king that he should actually provide justice to the thief's family uh, and by giving compensation because it is because of the wall the weak wall that was constructed which fell on the thief that the thief was killed while he was actually doing something illegal but he glosses over the fact he does not reveal the fact what he was actually doing he just says he was kind of continuing and actually pursuing his ancient trade the king is an idiot right as you have already been told he says justice will be done don't worry and he summoned the owner of the house so instead of reprimanding scolding the brother of the thief and the thief's brother also knows that he can actually say something like this something so stupid as this uh, to the king because he also knows that the king is a fool he's an idiot and actually get his way by getting some compensation so the owner of the house is actually someone who is a rich merchant then it goes on the rich merchant is also aware of the fact that this king is a fool so he decides to fool the king by saying that no 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 it is not my fault right i did not put up the fault it is the fault of the man who actually built the wall right so you should punish him the king, obviously a fool, falls for this kind of a reasoning, absurd reasoning as well. It's almost like, you know, you are blaming the mason for the work and not taking ownership for the fact that you were the one on whose property a particular structure had come up. So, he, um, uh, uh, the, the, the person, who, the mason who had built the wall is summoned, right? the but the uh, bricklayer the person who lays the brick he says no 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 it's not true because my mind was not on it now you look at the foolishness of the argument he says when i was actually building the wall constructing the wall my mind was not totally focused on the job because there was this dancing girl who was going up and down that street with her anklets making that jing 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 kind of a sound and therefore, I was not able to focus on the job. I couldn't keep my eyes or my mind on the wall that I was building. So you must get that dancing girl. So instead of taking the ownership and the responsibility for the fact that he had done a shoddy job, he actually blames it on the girl. You know, you're blaming the circumstances. You have heard the, uh, the phrase, the proverb that a bad carpenter always blames his tools. Now it means that if you are a carpenter who is not good at a job you will say the hammer is not good the screwdriver is not good the nails are not of good quality you will keep blaming everyone else but your own shoddy craft here the bricklayer instead of taking the responsibility for the fact that he was not focusing on the job while he was doing 
the job of constructing the wall he actually goes ahead and blames the dancing girl for having walked on the road look at the absurdity of it and absurdity is a word you should use in your answers because that's what through these various examples ak ramanujam is actually bringing to the fore the dancing girl is now an old woman because the wall was old the house was old she says no no yes of course i was um, I'm walking up and down that road but it's not me to be blamed because i was walking up and down that street because i had given some gold to the goldsmith to make some jewelry for me and he was a lazy scoundrel and he made many excuses and he will not give it back to me on time which is why i had to walk up and down to his house several times in a day and that's when this particular mason this particular bricklayer saw me and got uh, uh, distracted as a result of which he did not do his job properly so it is the goldsmith's fault not mine again you see the foolish arguments that are being presented and even more foolish king is actually accepting all those arguments and saying that yes yes okay you are forgiven now we will go and catch the goldsmith next the goldsmith and finally when he catches the goldsmith look at the reaction of the king he says wow we have got the real culprit at last get the goldsmith wherever he is hiding at once so the goldsmith is brought and he says i am a poor goldsmith because yes i did kind of make this dancing girl dancer come many times to my house but that's because there there i had to finish the rich merchant's order they had a wedding coming up in their home and they could not wait so you know how impatient rich men are so because i had to kind of execute the orders given by the rich merchant first so this one was not given priority as a result of which i could not finish the work which was given to me by this dancer so he says who is this rich merchant who made you walk up and down and that's when they found out when he named the merchant we found, he found out it's the same merchant whose house had been burgled whose house wall had actually come down on the thief and killed him in the bargain now so he says uh, it wasn't me but my father who ordered the jewelry he is dead i am innocent but the king consulted the minister who is also another idiot he says it's true your father is a true murderer but he is dead but somebody must be punished in his place this is an important line this is an important line because that's the absolutely uh, stupid manner in which the king actually administers his kingdom saying that if one person has committed some wrong if that person is not there you need to have someone else who will actually take the blame and be punished in his place so it's a very absurd way of administering justice that we find here in the kingdom of fools he says you have inherited everything from that criminal father of yours his riches as well as his sins i knew at once when i first set eyes on you that you were the root of this horrible crime you must die so he kind of the king by saying this is actually letting us know that he actually thinks a lot of himself that the moment he sets his eyes on someone he thinks he can actually know that that person is a good man or a bad man and in this case he says the moment i saw you you rich merchant i actually knew that you would be at fault so now a new stake is to be made ready for the execution now a stake essentially is a post to which a person is bound for execution okay right if you see this particular photograph so you'll get an idea about what a stake is now as the servants sharpened the stake and got it ready for the final impaling of the criminal impaling is the process of piercing the person with a sharp instrument right and it shows a very perverted idea of justice in that kingdom of fools yet another um, example of the absolute uh, cruelty that the king and the minister actually uh, put on the people out there in that kingdom just like you know not making them work during the day making them work during the night you know that whole the whole justice process is also reversed just like the nature's process is reversed in that kingdom so the the process of justice is also not the way it ideally should be right so when you are asked a question about give examples to show that nothing was being done the right way in this kingdom of fools you need to point out all these examples 
the more obvious examples but also stuff like this which will give your answer a much more of weight in terms of it will show to your examiner your evaluator that you have understood the story better than anyone else what shall we do when he said when suddenly it struck him that all they needed to do was to find a man fat enough to fit the stake now it so transpired that the rich merchant was somehow so too thin to be executed on the stake right so he appealed to the king's common sense again a very sarcastic kind of line because common sense is what is missing in the king as we have seen so far and the king also worried about it so he says we need to find a man fat enough now just like the rich merchant's son is actually being executed for the fault for the so-called fault of his father though it was not ideally his fault at all right similarly just because the rich merchant is found to be thin they now want to find a fat man who can actually fit the stake who can be kind of put on the stake and executed so they went all over town looking for a fat man and finally they found who they found this disciple who was actually gorging all these days on cheap food he says what have i done i am innocent i am a sanyasi so he says that's fine but you are fat and fat is what we need a fat man who can be executed in place of the rich merchant so what you realize right then is the completely perverted idea of justice in this kingdom of fools so then he kind of prays to his guru because he believes that only his guru can now save him and the guru saw that in a vision i mean it's all i mean not exactly cannot be true but that's how it's written out here in the story because he had some kind of magical pass so he comes and he whispers something into his disciples ears okay they enter into a plot they enter into a uh, what they will what he will say and what the disciple will say so guru says that he asked the king to put him on the stake first and put his disciple on the stake only after he has been executed right so the disciple says no 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 i should be uh, executed first because you brought me here first so the guru and the disciple enter into an argument in front of the king and the minister on who should be executed first and the king is obviously very puzzled he asked the guru why do you want to die we choose him. we chose him because we needed a fat man to be put on the stake so the guru takes the king to a corner and tells him that i will tell you something if you promise to keep your word and execute me first and he says that we want to die because we have been all over the world and this stake is the stake of the god of justice so he is kind of selling him a particular story knowing fully well that this king is an idiot who will actually buy the story he will actually believe whatever i actually tell him right so he says it is new it has never had a criminal on it because it was newly constructed built whoever dies on it first will be reborn as the king of this country and whoever goes next will be the future minister of this country right so that's why we want to be hanged in that order so the king is now thinking right so he says i don't want to lose the kingdom to someone else in my next birth right so he ordered the execution to be postponed by a day and then he kind of confabulates discusses it with his ministers or oh, minister and he says that let's not do this holy men do not tell lies right and therefore let's get executed so that we will be reborn as the king and the minister in our next life as well so uh, he told the executioners we will tell send the criminals tonight when the first man comes to you put him on to death first and then do the same to the second man these are my orders don't make any mistake and that night the king and the minister went secretly to the prison released the guru and the disciple disguised themselves as the guru and the disciple and were prom promptly executed right so he the guru knew that the that fools like the king will always be greedy which is why he was kind of trying to um, uh, trying to take advantage of that greed so the next morning the population of that kingdom realizes the people in that kingdom realize that these were the king and the minister and not the guru and the disciple and the whole kingdom is thrown into a state of confusion right and then they decided that we have had enough of these two idiots ruling over us we need some wise men to rule over us 
so therefore they say that we need a king and a minister so why don't the two of you become so in a very ironical sense in the present life itself the guru and the disciple become the king the new king and the new minister of the uh, kingdom and no longer it become it remains a kingdom of fools because now it's a wise man who is ruling but i must point out the irony but because we saw that the disciple was not a very very wise man the guru yes is but not the disciple the disciple was also a greedy person a lazy disciple who kind of was happy to be in that kingdom of fools so there is a bit of an irony out there but they decided that they will change the laws right but hopefully the disciple has also learned a lesson because of this episode so they changed the laws night was once again night day was once again day when people would work and you could get nothing for a duddu so the lesson is that only a fool would try to ruin his today for a tomorrow for the promise of a better tomorrow or for a promise of a good tomorrow right that's what the king and the minister did that they killed themselves on this or they got killed on this day thinking that their tomorrow will be equally better and also that whole thing of not wanting to share the king did not want to share his kingdom with someone else even in his next birth so he's also superstitious about after life right so those are the some of the themes of this very delightful story which i hope you have enjoyed i would suggest that you just take down the notes from what i have said also read the story once again mark some of the keywords so, so that you can use those examples in the question answers and that will make your answer sheet look that much better when you take the examination thank you very much for watching